Hello friends, Erroneous here again, and today we are going to be taking a look at a larger version of that door that I put up a while back. This version of the door can be up to 11 blocks wide, and once again as long as you want, it is actually fairly small for a door this size. Thank you very much for the honey mojang. I guess first things first, I'll show you the opening and closing sequences. Alright, and now the opening sequence. So let's get into how to build this wonderful machine. First things first, you need to build up the flying machines. I built a small little rig up here that should make it clear enough. It's not, it's not terribly difficult. All you have to do is put sticky pistons facing in the directions that I have here, observers facing away from the middle on each of them, and alternate between slime and honey. You need to put a piece of obsidian in front of them uh, while you're working on them, just as a safety measure, because they do like to fly around and stick to each other if they don't move in sync with each other. Then what you need to do is put blocks in between the two of them. You can have a maximum of 11 for a door with a total width of 13 if you include these red blocks that aren't actually a part of the door, but instead are used for spacing. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And you do the exact same thing on the other side, except on this side, you mirror it, obviously. Sticky pistons facing this way on top and middle layer, and two observers facing into them. Another layer below, same thing. The only difference is this observer right here, which you simply have to make facing away to trigger a later mechanism. You could even leave that off until the very end if you really want to. Now let's go ahead and make one of these just to show you how to do it. You'll need a piston, slime and honey, an observer, and a block of your choice as long as it is movable. You'll probably also want obsidian, but that's up to you. Step one, let's put down the obsidian so we don't have problems moving around. Step two, place two pieces of slime and have a sticky piston pointing into those two pieces of slime in the opposite direction that you want your door to move to get to its closed position. Next, put an observer facing the direction that you want the door to move to close. Put a layer of slime or honey, the same one that you use down here, or different, it doesn't matter as long as you keep alternating from one machine to the next. You want to do the same thing, except mirrored backwards. So piston there, and observer there, facing the opposite directions of those two. Next, you want to have a piston facing that direction, and an observer facing away from it like that. This part is going to be the part that pushes your door shut. Next, you're going to have one spacing block. You can, once again, use any block you want. I just happen to use glass because it's very different from iron. And you will also want your blocks for your door. So you may want to use grass if you want to make it blend in with the ground. I'm using iron once again, just for clarity. Now you can make this any width you want, as long as it is at least 1 and less than 11. I'll just make mine a couple blocks long. Now, we're going to mirror this same thing on the other side. First things first, let's get the slime down so we have something to build off of. Grab a sticky piston and an observer. 
facing away from it. Then we will put some more slime down here. A sticky piston facing away from the door. An observer facing towards the door. And then the same mirrored to the other side. Should look like that. And for safety, obsidian right there in front of the slime. Just for the sake of keeping things clear and concise, I'm not going to add in that piece until the very end when I'm working on the system that will automatically open and close the door. Now to add the next machine next to this, you do the exact same thing you did before, but you use honey instead. So you can literally just place blocks if I can get one on there, <laughs> like this. Once again, observer facing away. And once again, you need to make sure that from one machine to the next, you are always alternating. If I had done honey on this section, I would have to use slime on this section. And these won't interact with each other, so you could have it checkerboarded like that, but it's easier to understand if you just use a single type for each machine. And there you go. That's the next machine built up. You can just add the iron or whatever your door block is here and build another machine just like you did there. So as you can see, all you have to do is place a bunch of those modules next to each other as long as you want the door in that direction, alternating between slime and honey so they don't stick to each other. It is also worth noting that when you're making this, make sure that however wide you want your door, that the edge of the door here is at least one block away from these observers here. You will also want to make sure that you place the first bit exactly three blocks below the ground, because if you place it any higher, these observers will be cutting into the ground. General sticky block rules apply. Make sure that you don't have a wall directly next to it here or a floor directly under it here. Yeah, a lot of you will know the drill. <laughs> well, now that we've got this machine built up, you may be wondering, how do we open it and close it? Well, here's the first step. For the first step, you need droppers, observers, a block of your choice, sticky pistons, redstone repeaters, and redstone dust. To build this piece, you need to find where the edge of your door is going to be, and go back one, two, three blocks. On the fourth block, on the underside of it, you place a dispenser facing downwards, like so. Then you get three observers, all facing away from the dropper, Place an observer directly under the second observer, and place another observer facing away. So your circuit should look like this. It is rather important to make sure that the droppers are facing down. I'm not sure why, I'm assuming it's because the droppers update one another when they spit items into each other, but this works much better when it's facing downwards, and it also has some form of directionality. I'll show you how to overcome that in a in the latest part of the video because this is actually built in the direction that requires that fix. So the next step, once you have that, is you have a line of blocks back behind each one of your modules here and you just run a redstone line down it. Every 15th block put a repeater with no delay, like so, and that will prevent you from losing signal strength and it should also keep synchronization between all the modules. Although I haven't tested it. <laughs> I've only tested it with, uh, I think it's 12 blocks long. I haven't gone up to 15 yet. Now next thing you want to do, same exact thing down here. Extend out that line and cover it in redstone. The next thing you need to do is get another observer and place it face down on the second line of redstone. Then get yourself a sticky piston and place it on top of that observer facing towards the module. 
last thing, place an iron block right there, and that is this module completed. To drive this module, you will take in your redstone input here, so you'll have the circuit that controls it run into this line, and then you just have no delay on that line, but a repeater to make sure it gets as far as possible and two full repeaters worth of delay on this line. So if I jump ahead to my pre-completed one, you can see that I have just built the system and filled in every single layer. You should get something that sounds like this. The next step is to make the launching mechanism for this machine here. This will allow us to get started on moving the machine closer to the shut position so it's easier to work on this side without having the machine in the way. First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find where these line up, these, this line of observers that is on the closing pusher and you'll come down two blocks. You'll want to have an observer facing in that direction, and then after you've placed that, you need a regular piston. Sticky will work, but regular is cheaper and is less likely to damage your machine. And you place it off of the back side of this observer. Next, you need to put slime down here and use some sort of scaffolding block to put a sticky piston facing up into the slime. Just copy that design over to there and get a scaffolding block of your choice to place next to the piston. This line will extend over here to as long as your door is. This may not need to be the entire length of the door depending on how long your door is. Next up, you continue the same pattern that you just did here, but you use honey instead and you do it directly next to it and do the same thing next to that, but make it out of slime, and the same thing next to that, but make it out of honey, until you get to the end. In our case, this is the end. Once again, just place all the observers facing that way, and the regular pistons facing up. Last step for this piece is to add redstone down along the scaffolding block here. In our case, we can cut these two off because it only needs to extend to the last piston. And then you will put a repeater facing into the first one to make sure that the signal is nice and strong to get through. So now I'll go ahead and place the button down here and power the repeater. And that will give a quick pulse to all of these observers here. So now to get the machine to move out of the way, we remove our safety blocks there and hope and pray that this works. This is what should happen if it is working properly. Notice that the spacing blocks are perfectly lined up with the edge of the door. Once again, to prevent anything from going horribly wrong while we're working on this, it helps to put obsidian up right here. And it is worth noting that you don't actually have to use obsidian. I just use obsidian because it's very obvious what the purpose is in a flying machine object. But you could also use droppers or furnaces or uh, I think chests as long as you're not on bedrock. Just something that won't be moved by pistons. Now that we have made sure that this is completely immobilized, we can go ahead and build the exact same thing that we built over here, but mirror it and put it on that side. So once again, we get a dropper facing down there, dropper facing down here, observers facing across, observer facing across, block, redstone, Sticky piston, block, block. 
there. Redstone dust, observer, and extend that all the way that way. Once again, your circuit should look like this one completed, although it's going to be a bit cramped this time because the flying machine is still nestled up against it. You can do the same sort of timings here, unless you have the directional bug that I ran across. I'll show you how to fix that now. The more eagle-eyed among you may have noticed this initially. This is the original machine that I showed off. There is an extra layer of that long device that's used to trigger the flying machines over here. The only difference is that the droppers extend one past the flying machine as well as all of the observers and extra circuitry. It just needs to go one extra further. I have no idea why, but this last machine doesn't like to move sometimes if you don't have that extra column there. So just keep that in mind if your machine keeps launching perfectly except the one of the machines just stays in place and the rest of it moves past and gets stuck and it all breaks, that may be the problem. I've also found that when that happens, it tends to need a little bit of extra circuitry to control it. That circuitry is not terribly difficult. It looks a little complicated, but it's pretty simple. Essentially, you just make the delay come in and extend it a bit by using a 4-tick repeater paired with a 1-tick repeater. Back on our working model that we are building up I'm going to go ahead and remove all the scaffolding and do the first somewhat full closing. It's not going to have the flushing mechanism yet, but it will be able to fully open and, or fully close at this point. So now let's see if this one will need the directional fix. Yeah. See how it gets stuck right here? This isn't the end of the world, because you can actually get it back from here. It just takes a lot of work. If you do end up getting it stuck here, here's how I fixed it. I went down the middle here and put a row of obsidian. And then I went down here and put a second row of obsidian. Or any immovable block, honestly, as long as you can get a redstone wire on it. You may need a trapdoor for this part you need to go inside of that hole and place some redstone. You could place the redstone while you're still building it up, but I did not think that far ahead. <laughs> so now that I have a line of redstone going all the way down there, I can place a button here, get rid of all of this obsidian here, cross my fingers, and hope for the best. There we go. So now that machine will be out of our way for the rest of the video. You will want to remove all of this obsidian though. This obsidian can go if you want to remove it, but you don't have to. It's not going to hurt anything. If it's a pain to remove, just go ahead and leave it. It'll still function. If anyone can tell me why this doesn't work in some directions in reg or others, Here's the direction I'm facing. South in that direction, the machine is facing west. If any of you know why that doesn't work, please uh, let me know in the comments below. Right, to fix this circuit, as I said before, you just need to place a... So now let's try it out with that full timing circuit that I put up. Hmm, nope, okay. Alright, fingers crossed. Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> I spent so much time over-engineering that because I couldn't find a solution to that problem. You just need three repeaters with full delay. Oh my gosh. Mm. Alright. 
let's uh, let's actually see if that works with the full opening or full closings. Minus flushing, of course. Ooh, lag spike. I can't believe I I spent so long on this circuit. And it was just that one repeater that I added at the end that made it work? <laughs> I may just be some crazy man with a, with a randomized skin. <laughs> well, on the bright side, now you guys know how to make it. <laughs> well, major gaffes outside of the dapper gaff server aside, we are now ready to actually add in the flushing mechanism. So let's go ahead and send our flying machine back by triggering that system first and then by giving two quick pulses to this maybe not quite so quick uh, it's so much easier if you have the system automated to do it aw oh, man again? I had this all planned out <laughs> it may not look like it but I sort of know what I'm doing half the time. <laughs> oh man. I'll be right back. <laughs> there we go. Okay. That is much easier when you have it attached to a circuit and don't have to time the lever flip properly. Alright. Now we can move on to the flushing mechanism. Alright, to start the flushing mechanism, all you have to do is find the corner of your door that you want to be the side that it starts on. It honestly doesn't matter which side of the door, they both are functionally the same. But I am going to do this one. Yeah, I'll do this one. So what you do is you find the corner that you want to start it in. You go in two blocks and place an immovable block. You'll want one here as well. Now that you've got those two in place, you put a piston facing upwards, slime block underneath it and one next to it, and an observer facing that way. Next, you put an observer facing in that direction with a sticky piston facing back out of it. Two more slime blocks on that. And, once again, piston facing in that direction. And a sticky piston. You may notice that this looks a lot like that, because it's basically the same thing, except that piston right there is turned upright, instead of pointing in that direction. It's pointing that direction. But, since it works the same way, all we have to do is extend it out like that. Right, just like before, we're going to go ahead and put some chucks on this thing so it can't move. You can use any immovable object. Like I said, I just like using obsidian. Now that we have this in place so it is the same width as the door, and it's that far back, we can go ahead and run a line of redstone across here, like this. And this will be the way that we trigger the flushing mechanism. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the chuck on the front. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come to the far end of our door, however far that way it may be. It could be one block, it could be oh, 200. As long as you're inside of the rendered chunks while the door is moving, it'll work. And what you need to do is put an immovable block five blocks in. Just a full sheet all the way across. Once you have that, you need to come down one, in one, down another one to stop the flying machine from flying infinitely or crashing into the wall. And then make another row here. And on these two, all you have to do 
Just bring them all the way across just like you did before. And the bottom one you cover with redstone. This is what will trigger the flushing mechanism to return to its original position, which will unflush the door. We can demonstrate that if I add a button here, and I already added one to the other side. So we'll launch this one first, go through the full closing mechanism, then we can launch this one. At this point, the door is shut, but as you can see, it's not flat on the ground. So to get it flat, we have this one launch, and it pushes each of the blocks up as it travels across to this dock over here. To send it back, you just have to power that line, and when it travels back, it undoes what it did traveling the other direction. So now the door is one big sheet again, and you can have the door launch as normal to get it back out of the way. Now it is finally time to make this completely automatic, so we just have a single lever or some other redstone input to flip and it'll make the whole thing function. It's not as hard as you'd think, honestly. What you need to do is make it so when this returns to its docking station, the rest of the door will move off to the side. So to detect that, we put an observer right there, and we get some sort of block, doesn't matter what type, as long as it can have redstone on top of it. We place it there, and then we do a very, very simple circuit that is used to create a delay. To make the delay circuit, all we have to do is put a repeater here, set to two ticks. This will make sure that the uh, observer gives out a pulse that is definitely long enough for us to pick up. You could probably fine tune it better, but I found that that will never fail. And then you put two comparators, one facing away from the repeater and one facing towards it, right next to each other. You have to make sure that the one facing away is directly in front of the repeater. Next, you just need some redstone dust there. And that's the delay circuit all done. Now we need to hook it up. When the door is shut, the way that we open it is with this input here. So all we have to do now is take that output, put it into that, and we'll be good. So now, whenever this flushing mechanism returns to its home dock, there will be a pulse sent to this set of pistons, which will update that machine over there to go back to where it is now. We do, however, need a second signal coming off of this to tell the machines here that they need to leave their dock and move to the open position. So let's go ahead and pull a line over. It is worth noting that depending on how wide your door is, you may need to extend this past the 15 block limit that redstone can travel, so you'll need a repeater. And I've found that setting it to four ticks gives enough time between the one that is over here when it's closed and moves to there to get out of the way. But now that we have these hooked up, we should be able to automatically open it. So let's go ahead and close it and give it a try. While this is traveling over, let me explain quickly. This observer on the side when it reaches its dock, lines up with the input of the timer circuit and gives it power. The time that it turns on is enough to trigger that and the other flying machine 
and allows them to move out of the way of the door, thus opening it. Now it's time to make it so it will close automatically. All we need to do to make it close automatically is put an observer facing into that block just like we did on the side of our flushing mechanism and then find out where it lines up and attach that to the flushing mechanism's trigger. So let's go ahead and set this to close and then we can find out exactly where it lines up. Alright, looks like it lines up right here. So now what we need to do is take a repeater I like to set it to two ticks just because it makes things cleaner. Bridge it up over this if you have to. You may have put that on the other side. Doesn't really matter one way or the other. And then bring it around to here and link it up with the redstone on top of these immovable objects. Very important, if you have it in this orientation, make sure to put a block on top of that redstone or else it'll connect and you will get a signal that you don't want to pass around being passed around. Now all you have to do is cover these blocks with a bit of redstone and that is very important to avoid. Always put chucks on your flying machines. I'll be right back. Okay, I've gotten it pulled back and now this is when you would normally connect it. You want to put the chucks on before you connect it, because for some reason, even though this doesn't change shape, that causes a block update on this block, which sends off part of your flying machine and not the rest, and that causes a whole bunch of problems. So always put chucks on it when you're working on it. Now that we do have it attached, though, we can go ahead and send that off after removing the chucks, of course. And once we send it off, it should be complete, other than the main input. We activate the closing mechanism by pressing that button, or the opening mechanism rather. It deflushes the door, and then triggers the system that we already talked about to open it. And that works just perfectly. So now the system that we just built, if we trigger that device, and then trigger this device, the door will close, and as soon as that flying machine comes to rest and the door is completely shut, this line will trigger and launch the flushers. Ah, another thing to note. <laughs> Make sure that you repeat your signal so it actually reaches the end. <laughs> So well, regardless of whether that worked or not, I'm going to send this back and it should still open properly. Yeah. Okay, I only have to replace like four blocks. That's a plus. Alright, so now it's time to hook everything up to a single input. So what you need to do is pick a spot somewhat near your door. Or, I guess it doesn't have to be near your door, but it's nice if it's near your door. And you put a lever on a block. You could use any redstone input with enough finagling, but I am going to use a lever for this example. And you need to put a redstone dot underneath it with a repeater coming out in one direction and a torch in the other. Now that you have that, go ahead and bring a block out to here and put a repeater on it. On each one of these repeaters, you need to make a monostable circuit. Go ahead and put a piston on each of them. It just occurred to me this needs to be down a block. My apologies. And you do the same thing as you just did on the other side. Place a block out with a repeater. It's probably best to put it somewhat towards your machine just to help keep it more compact. Do the same thing on this side. And extend 
the outputs of both of them to Vortex. The next thing you need to do is you need to attach this one to one of your mechanisms and that one to the other. Now the way I've laid them out, I think I'm going to attach this one to the closing mechanism and that one to the opening mechanism, but you can decide based on your own space and usage needs. So for the one that attaches to the closing mechanism, you just need to take a block out of here and then get some redstone coming off of that, bring it over, make sure that you avoid that because that will mess things up a lot. I may need to reorient that. Alright, like I said, make it fit your use cases. Wherever you put the switch, as long as you have these elements somewhere and have them wired up, it should work. So now we're going to go ahead and bring a line off from this repeater here. And this line is going to come over this way. It's going to go into a repeater, which is then going to point into a block. And we're going to put another one of those delay circuits that we used in the dock for the flushing mechanism. We're going to put another one of them right here. Just like that. Just throw down a repeater. And now this end is completely hooked up. The other mechanism, you need to launch using this spot here. So let's bring a line over to here and attach it to the same output as we have here. When you're running these lines, the only things you really need to look out for is make sure that you give the flying machines at least one block of clearance, especially this piece here, because that will turn redstone signals on. Like if I had a block there with a piece of redstone on top, that redstone would get lit and it would trigger the rest of the system without the proper timing. But now that we have this in place, we should have our opening sequence, or our closing sequence, ready to go. Let's give it a try. Oh. Now how in the world did that happen? Got a bunch of pistons that just went missing. Poof, gone. Alright, I'll be right back. I found the pistons. They were stuck to the bottom of this thing. I forgot to put a delay on these two, so the way that we can lengthen it here is by placing a repeater there, and a block here, and what that'll do is it'll make it so the signal can pass through in one tick, but it holds until at least four ticks after. So this thing does not appear to be connected to anything, but there is a reason that we made it. The reason is that we need to connect a falling edge output of this lever to the other side. So when you flip it one way, it gives an output to this side, and when you flip it the other way, it gives an output to that side. To get the output over there may be a bit of a challenge, depending on how you've laid your stuff out, but for me it ends up being pretty simple it looks like. Once again, you need to make sure that you give a wide berth to all of your, uh, all of your flying machines. Now something that helps here is to have a lever on hand. You can slap it onto there and turn it on. It'll instantly let you see when something connects and it'll let you see when you run out of signal strength, like right there. You want to make sure that the power reaches the very far end in one go. So try to get your repeater somewhere near the beginning. If you've stayed this long into the video, kudos on you. This, is, this has been a long video and probably quite boring for a lot of you. <laughs> so, we get a bit of a launch there. Fully closes. The flushing mechanism does its job just fine. And now it's completely closed. There we go. I see movement. Yep, the flushing mechanism is working. Okay. Oh good, my mic wasn't muted. I was afraid that that whole section of my mic was muted. 
Now, if you followed till this part of the video, you should have a fully functioning door, provided you were actually working on it at the same time as watching it. If you have any ideas of how I can make tutorials like this better, please let me know in the comments below because I plan on making more of them if I have time and if I have inspiration, which constantly getting something, but a lot of them are stupid so I don't make them or tell anyone about them. <laughs> so yeah, let me know if you have any ideas, let me know if there's any way I can improve down below. And if you enjoyed the video, as always, please leave a like, it really helps out. If you didn't enjoy, don't like it, dislike it, I really don't care. If you're new to the channel, if you want to see more stuff that I do, why don't you go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button, tap the bell to get all the notifications. Thank you all for watching, have a wonderful rest of your day.